Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alpenglow Industries Solder Sesh, where we are not soldering today. We are crocheting something for resistors. So I'm very excited. My guest today is Dr. Anurada Reddy, and um, she is a she designs really cool kind of electronics themed projects and um, there's definitely a component of activism in a lot of her things and so we're going to talk all about those and uh, we're also going to crochet a resistor as you can see I have grabbed a whole bunch of scraps of yarn from my stash <laughs> and yeah we're we're happy to have everybody everybody here um, there is a link in the chat uh, at the very beginning to the instructions if you want to follow along and crochet yourself. Um, and yeah, also a link to the resistor color codes if you want to learn more about uh, how to decipher them and what they mean. Me personally, I always have a little bit too much trouble actually seeing the colors very well on resistors because they're you know, exceedingly tiny, <laughs> you know, this, this big. <laughs> and also I find that the 1% blue ones here, um, basically things look like a lot of dark lines like they do right now. And it's hard for me to decipher the colors. So uh, I'm always a fan of just using a multimeter to, <laughs> to quickly and easily figure out what my resistors are. But, uh, you know, if you have some magnification and if you're good at deciphering the difference between orange and red on a blue background, then you can also tell what your resistor value is just by just by looking at it. Cool. Um, well, uh, Anu, tell us tell us about your your superhero backstory, your path into STEM and what has made you into the amazing creator that you are today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, first of all, lovely to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I, I really can't say I have any superhero backstory. If anything, it's like kind of like an anti-hero or like <laughs> um, mostly it. because um, I started in STEM. I have a background as an electronics engineer. I have a bachelor's degree in electronics. Mm -hmm um which i hate what what made you kind of, what made you choose that path did you always have an interest in science and stuff when you were a kid like did you get any encouragement along the way well um i i did i mean i i guess i was a little bit of a nerdy kid i loved math and i loved like science i liked dinosaurs and rocks and i don't know that kind of yeah. stuff and, um <laughs> But I think um, I think I was also a very creative kid. I was super into arts. I was, uh, I mean, I come from a family of like architects and designers. So like that was always something I was interested in. Um, but I think also the Indian education system kind of played into my, you know, like the options that I had were like to either go into engineering or to become a doctor. Like if you're, <laughs> I mean, if you're like a person who grew up in that time of India, I'm not sure things are different today, but yeah, it's there's just two options. You're an engineer or you're, or you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I was obviously more interested in math and you know chemistry and such. So I went into the, the side, which is called NPC or like math, physics, chemistry, which automatically meant that I had to do an engineering degree. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, yeah, so I did my engineering degree um, with quite some, I mean, it was, it was not great. I, I loved analog electronics, but I didn't think I, you know, I, I didn't feel like I could see how it was applied in real life. It was all about like, you learning all the formulae and like, you know, passing exams. It was less about all the cool things you could do with it. And um, I kind of missed a little bit of the creative side. So yeah. um, I moved into design. Um, which was perfect for me because I could actually bring in my interest in electronics in a much more like, you know, uh, kind of in a real life sort of a way, like, you know, talking to people, understanding what they want and then building things for them. And at the same time, design opened like my eyes to so many other fields, like, like you know, the humanities and like, animation and like just a lot of, you know, just broadened things up for me. And nice. I never left design. Yeah um cool. and then i wanted to specialize what, what are some of the field. things that you've that you've worked on like that you've well, that you've done designs for 
Well, I mean, uh, so I was mostly in an educational program, so then I could experiment quite a bit. I made, uh, I made like a very Scott McCloudy, like a comic, a, a digital comic. Um, nice. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I, I, I tried to experiment a little bit with coding as well back then and uh, create like an interactive comic. Um, I also made um, a bunch of other things, like I made like a stop motion animation explaining how, how uh, like, how Indian languages work, how we mix a lot of languages to speak. And I tried to visualize cool. that in stop motion. Um, yeah, and I did a bunch of like ethnographical, yeah, work before. And yeah, and all of this kind of led me to do a degree in interaction design, like kind of pursue a master's in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to London to do an, an, a master's, yeah. So, um, and in London, my program was kind of, it was leaning towards research and I also developed some aptitude for research. And uh, that uh, led me to get a PhD in Sweden. <laughs> um, so I'm now in Sweden and I've done cool. a PhD. It's been, yeah, it's, I did a PhD and I finished a postdoc. So it's been seven years since I've been, yeah, working. A lot of school. A lot, a lot of school. school. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the first time I have time off after a very, very long period of just school. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for choosing to spend some of your time off with us. <laughs> of course. Nice. Cool. What is yeah. uh, what is the subject of your PhD? Uh, so so the field I work with is called interaction design and the subject it was the Internet of Things. Um, so my PhD dissertation is called Researching IoT Through Design. And, um, and then this uh, dissertation, I kind of take more experimental approaches. I look at how people participate uh, with Internet of Things, um, like how data, how people give data and to what extent is that data being used by other players and so on. Um, but also I look at how things themselves participate. So like how things are alive because they are able to like, you know, act on the world without our yeah, because they're able to automate stuff. So I, I pretend like things have like a life of their own. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I do more experiments that way. Um, yeah, so I've done a bunch of nice experiments. And, and I think in my postdoc, that's when I kind of made a shift because I thought the IoT was such a marketing term that mm. I decided I wanted to work more with hackers and femme hackers like you. And um, that's sort of how I landed in the place I'm in right now, where I kind of got the opportunity to explore the craft side of my, yeah, craft and art and bridging that with electronics. And yeah, that's my cool. background. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a comment. Arturo sent me. Thank you, Arturo. I, I saw your tweet, by the way, Arturo, your message, uh, like right before we started. So thank you for spreading the word and helping us with that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, can can you tell us anything about uh, the the thing that you're transitioning to in in the new year? Yeah, so um, so I think I've been in academia way too long. <laughs> so I'm moving into the industry. It's a, it's a corporate job. Yeah. And um, I'll be working as a, as a UX uh, specialist. So UX is a user experience specialist in the design team of a company called Neo4j. It's a, it's a company that... Um, Let's see, um, they work with uh, a particular way of visualizing big data and that uh, and, the, and the key is that they use graph graphs, uh, mm -hmm. data graphs as a way to um, visualize and allow people to, yeah, uh, do a lot, lots of like uh, interesting analysis of data and so on. And um, they have this enterprise software and um like a couple of solutions within that software and i'll be the person who comes with the, the research expertise to say like okay how do we understand what their users need who are their clients and so on and how do we improve their product then? yeah nice nice i like 
I, I like data-driven UX. I think that's awesome. <laughs> we need more people, more people doing stuff like that for sure. Cool. Yeah, I think it's a scary field, but yeah, I think I have the training to at least tackle it for a while. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> cool. Well, awesome. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's that's really interesting. How like how much of a um, like so you kind of, you started out in electrical engineering. How much of I, I would say like a typical electrical engineering curriculum do you, did you go through before kind of focusing on on more design? Like, did you have to do a bunch of classes with you know? circuits and and analog and digital and microprocessors and and all of that that kind of stuff as well yes yes everything yep. <laughs> you said yes cool that's it's yeah. interesting i think it's um it's it's interesting to see different things that you can do with that like you don't necessarily have to take that and just make circuit boards right you mm -hmm. can you can take that and then use that experience and that knowledge to do things that uh, help make products more useful and more usable. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's cool. Yeah, thank nice. you. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, should we should we start on on our resistor here? Um, yes. It's been a, a little bit since I've crocheted, but I started out crocheting and then I learned how to knit after I learned after I was already crocheting for a few years. So. I think it'll be. Ah. I think it'll be good. So you're a beginner at like you started with crochet as well. Yeah, yeah. My mom That's taught cool. me um, how to crochet. I she oh. used to um, make baby blankets for people when they you know when they had kids, and so when the first set of my friends had a kid, uh, I wanted to do the same thing. I like wanted to make something by hand, and I was like, Mom. Uh, <laughs> you teach me how to crochet again i know you did when i was like a kid but i don't really remember <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's how i started and um mm -hmm. then yeah fell into the rabbit hole of yarn basically is how that ended up <laughs> right. yeah and once you get in it's hard it's not gonna i mean you're not it's not easy to let go yeah yes yes once yarn <laughs> gets its claws into you you're you're done mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly so I just wanted to show the viewers um, like what what the, what we're making and how it might look in the end. Uh, these are my resistor cushions. Um, they have some resistors in them. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. yeah. So this is what we're making. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And yes, we can see um, my my resistors here. I usually like keep in a dish. <laughs> The dish of miscellaneous components. Oh, this one. Now you like won't need the dish anymore. On it. <laughs> so yes, yes, this will replace the dish. I like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna make the 2.2K resistors, which are just like red, 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 like a lot of red. And that's gonna be fun. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I have a little bit of red. I have some orange, yellow, green, blue. I figured I'd just do rainbow, whatever, whatever yeah, value that yeah. ends up being. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So, so I was just telling Carrie that I it's so there's instructions which Carrie posted, um, and these in, I wrote these instructions two years ago, and I haven't tried it out myself since then. So this is gonna be an experiment to see if my instructions make sense. Or not. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Well, I know that pretty much all crochet has to start with a slip knot, so I feel pretty Well, confident. this one starts with a magic circle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, a magic circle would mean, <clears throat> I mean, there's different ways of doing a magic circle, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that should do it. That's the first. Um, Can you move not your hand a little crochet? bit to the left? Yes, just, yes. I was just thinking. Photo. Yeah. Yes. I know it's yeah. hard to keep track of everything. <laughs> yeah, one second. Let me 
Uh, there we go. Yeah, that should be good. I'm going to start again because it not it up. Cool. So we make an E. And once you have the E, oh, that's the wrong way around. See, this is the thing. <laughs> I struggle with the beginning. Um, the beginning is often the hardest yeah, actually, part with, just, with yarn. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it the, the, the way I know how to make the magic yeah. circle. So you just cross it over. Yeah, this is basically, it's kind of just a different, um, it's a different way of making a slip knot is what I would, is what what I'm mm -hmm. used to calling it. So I, uh -huh. the way that I do it is that I, I start with my fingers by just making, mm -hmm. making a loop and then mm -hmm. pulling the tail through like that. And then I put the hook in and then you can just right. pull it with the tail there. Yeah. Yeah. And the, that's interesting though, the way in your instructions, you kind of like grab it through with the, with the hook. Um, okay. But yeah, I, but act, actually I shouldn't have pulled the tail. <laughs> that's what, that's what I shouldn't have done. So. Right. Yeah. So yeah, like but leave, leave this part like a little bit loose. Right little loose there there we go so it's like kind of like a slip knot but without cinching cinching it fully right cool yeah i think i've learned it i mean i i just learned crochet on the internet just a couple of years ago like maybe two years ago and uh the way I learned was that you always start. I mean, you either work with the with the chain for which you need a mm -hmm. slip knot, or you need to. If you're working on a circle, you need a magic circle. That's what I learned. Yeah. Yeah, there there are a lot of ways of doing it. I would mm -hmm. say. Um, yeah, there's definitely this way of doing it where you like work everything into the into sort of like that first circle, um, mm -hmm. or a way that I. Yeah, the way that I have typically done it, and it's, I think it's like the same thing. It's, um, I do cinch it, I think. Let's see, how have I done this before? It's been a while. <laughs> I feel like I, ch oh yeah, I tend to chain one and then, and then work stitches into that initial one. But I'm going to try, right. I'm gonna try this. Way I haven't done, I haven't done this before, so. It'll be, it'll be new. I feel like this is okay. the, this is the, like, this is similar to, you know, an Arduino blink sketch. Like you yes. kind of have to get that figured out first before <laughs> doing anything else. Right. So then I'm going to go in again and now have two loops on the needle. Cool. And okay, so now we're kind of doing a single crochet essentially there. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, to start off. so I have my magic circle, which I squeezed <laughs> to form a really cute little circle. Nice. Okay, so I'm doing five, five more. So inserting the hook through and grabbing a loop and then um, grabbing some more yarn and pulling it through two loops. Mm -hmm. So I got one and now inserting into circle, grabbing the loop and then yarning over and through two loops. Trying to do that and keep it all in the camera. Mm -hmm. And so these are just single crochets. And when you get back to the tail, I don't think it really matters where it goes. You can just like 
put it off to the side there for now. Let's see. I just totally actually, hang on. Just gonna undo that one so I can see again. Ah, there we go. And totally lost count, of course, because I'm trying to <laughs> hold more than one thing in my brain at once. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So I've done, and so the way that I like to count crochet stitches is like by these V's yeah. on top. So one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to do three more before I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> Four. I have my first uh, stitch marker on my second row. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so now, right. And so now we're pulling the the loop, right? So mm -hmm. kind of cinch everything up. So I can do it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like when it's this small, it's actually easier to take my hook out briefly and like yeah. manipulate stitches so that I can see them all, and then then pull. Oh, mine's not pulling very well, but that's okay. Oh, oh there we go. That's a little bit a little bit better. So one, two, three, four, five, oh, and then six right there. Okay, cool. And uh, I can always cheat it uh, at the end if if I need to by weaving. I can weave that tail in through here, in through the base here, and and cinch it close manually if I yeah. if I can't cinch it enough here. It's a good little exactly. trick. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Oh, crochet in Norwegian is called heckling. Interesting. Heckling? Heck oh, wow. Well, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. H-E-K-L-I-N-G. <laughs> oh, hello, Blenster, and hello, Jason. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> oh, Marius wants to know if they can ask a question about graphs and circuit boards. Absolutely. Ask your question. Okay, while he's doing the question, I will go along to my second row. Okay, so now I am increasing, we're increasing the single crochet stitches by doubling each uh, of the six. Yeah? Did I miss a step? There's an echo and I can hear you twice. Ah, is that because, okay, I think I know what the problem is. No, I have my YouTube also. Yeah, okay, now things are good. Cool. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hearing an echo on this end, so. I'm yeah, no, there. it's, uh, like I said, I started looking at the chat and I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. All right. So now we're doing two single crochets in each of our previous single crochets. Six and I do stitches. want to do a stitch marker. Um, yes. In case you don't know, I do actually sell really cool stitch markers. <laughs> this is actually on the Alvin Glow Industries website now. They're uh, binary and they're just, they're just like kind of used for counting. And, um, they are teeny tiny little circuit boards and they have the decimal equivalent underneath them, but it's covered by solder mask. So like you can see it, but you can't cheat too much if you're if you're just learning learning binary. Um, and there's actually a blog post that we did of like how how binary works in a couple different ways of um, like thinking about it. So I'm just gonna grab you down here. You're amazing. I really like them. Thank you. 
All right. And of course, we start with all zeros. <laughs> Um, if you don't um, have stitch markers specifically, like these little coil of safety pins are very, very useful for that. Um, and the reason we're marking our first stitch is so that we can kind of find it again, because uh, we're crocheting in the round in like a continuous spiral. All right. It's always like a little bit, you know, there's a lot going on at the beginning. So mm -hmm. it's, if it's a little, uh, you know, tight with, with stuff, that's okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do two single crochets. So now that we're not through the loop, um, people do actually do this different ways. Um, so these are our stitches viewed from above. You have like all of these little V's going around. And mm -hmm. there are two, um, like two loops of yarn, essentially. Um, the way I crochet, and I, I always hate to say that anything is like particularly standard, but I put the hook through underneath both loops. You can just do a crochet through either like the front loop or the back loop. And there are some stitch patterns that do that because um, it just looks a little bit different. So um, when, when it, when uh, patterns talk about like crocheting through the front loop or the back loop, that's that's what they're talking about. But in general, I think most patterns are written so that you um, go underneath both loops like that. And then picking up um, a loop there and then going through both. And then doing that again into that same stitch. Oops, trying not to get my stitch marker wrapped up in that. <laughs> Although it's removable, so it's not the end of the world if it if it mm. does get caught up. <laughs> so there we go. Two there. And two on the next one. And then continuing to do two stitches all the way around. And um, I'm using a G hook and some um, DK weight yarn. If you're not into yarn, um, like DK weight is kind of a, a description of the general thickness of the yarn. Uh, mm -hmm. It stands for double knitting. And um, wow. yeah, and uh, it it's hard to describe in terms of actual um like yarn tends to be difficult to describe in terms of like actual measurements like millimeters or or you know inches or something like that um mm -hmm. but i would i would call it sort of like medium thickness knitting yarn um <laughs> so something that you would make uh like you know sweaters out of and uh, mittens and hats and stuff like that it would be a little too thick for socks in most cases. Okay, yeah. I think I'm back. I, I, I think for me, I just like recently learned um, from um, Knit to, to Code, Senya, what all oh, of yeah. these yarn weights mean. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, she was really kind to explain everything to me. Yeah, so I now know what's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Knit to Code, <laughs> for the shout out about the stitch markers. <laughs> um, OK, if you want to calculate how similar two circuit boards are, would graphs be the best data structure if you consider each component to be a node? All right, I think That's... I have to look at the question again. Yeah, that's an that's an interesting question. Cool. That's an interesting question. Um, never thought about applying graphs to circuit boards, but um, I think that should be possible. No, I mean, if you have uh, different, uh, yeah, 
components as nodes, and then you have like you know their um, relationships, uh, you know, addressed in the data structure. Yeah. But I don't know enough yet, so I should also probably talk about this a bit later when I have a bit more understanding of how the software properly works. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So more, more chat about that. That's why you need the right data structure to compare apples and apples. Um, and if you don't care about trace differences, that that would be more a comparison of the schematic. Hmm. Yeah, that's That is interesting. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can't hmm. really care so much about the how it physically. Yeah, yeah, it, that might be a tricky one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, obviously, just comparing the the circuit doesn't tell you like the the electric the comparing the electrical circuit like comparing the schematic doesn't tell you where the traces are going to be or how they're routed yeah. or something like that that would be yeah. a i don't know how my brain would want to visualize that data that would be hard mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it also depends what kind of similarity we're looking for between circuit boards like i mean yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've competed or com competed completed <laughs> two rounds. Mm -hmm. And so what's our next step? So the third round is uh, just going around again, uh, doing mm -hmm. a single crochet around for so 12 more stitches. Yeah, All right. cool. So just crocheting. As for my instructions. <laughs> <laughs> crocheting normally. So again, I'm going to try to put this a little bit closer to the camera so you can see a little bit better. So um, like the first, the, the sometimes the hardest thing about like learning something in fiber is like learning to identify your stitches and mm -hmm. like what does your stitch look like? So my stitch here, there are like these two legs that come down and and are and go through the stitch underneath it right there. And then the top of the stitch are these two loops. So like these two down here and these two up here are kind of all one stitch. And because they're just two legs coming down, um, that's that's what a single crochet looks like. If you have, um, there are different types of um, crochet stitches. So you know, let me just do this, do a demonstration real quickly to get more, get more height in there. So um, with a single crochet, you just start out by putting your, putting your um, hook underneath those two um, loops of yarn on top, right? So you put it through your stitch and then pull a loop of yarn through and then pull one loop of yarn through those two. Mm -hmm. But you can make stitches of different heights. So um, a double crochet, you start out with a loop over your hook, and then you put your hook through your two stitches. And again, you're doing the same thing. You grab a loop of yarn through, but now you have like three loops on your needle or on your hook. And um, so instead of of just you know taking like doing a yarn over and putting it through all three which you can do it's a different stitch <laughs> um you take it you take your yarn and you just pull it through two loops and then you yarn over again and pull it through the second two loops and so that increases the height of your stitch now and you can see that i have like this big long stitch with some like extra twisties here and so that is a double crochet um, if we had just yarned, yarned over, pulled our loop of yarn through, 
if we had just pulled this loop through all three that were on our stitch, that's called a half double crochet. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just a little, yeah. little thing about other other stitches and what things might mean if you read other patterns that have different different terms. Yeah, and I think these are also US terms, right? They're like in the yeah. UK, they have different names for them. Yeah. That is a really good point. Um, UK and US um, uh, terms are different. I don't know. I don't know what other English speaking um, areas of the world use. Like, I don't know what Australia and New Zealand use. I'm guessing probably the UK um, Possibly. versions, mm -hmm. maybe. But yeah, yes, it, it is. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was saying that the the persons, people who I learned it from on the internet were uh, based in the US. So I, I learned the US terms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I'm back to my original. I think I'm back to. And you start to see that it's starting yeah. to curve, right? Mm hmm. So, yeah, yeah that's I, I, cool. Like, as you as you do that round, um, you know it starts to curve up because the first two were flat because we started out with a small circle and then we increased stitches, which increases the circumference of the circle, so the whole thing kind of stays flat. But if you keep the same amount of stitches and you don't increase the circumference of the circle, mm -hmm. then it starts to go into a tube shape, and then you start just crocheting around the edge of the tube. Exactly. So the fun part about this um, making it this far is that it just gets easier from here. You just yep. have to keep repeating the same, you know, tube structure the whole, yeah, until you come to the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, and this is kind of, this is the part that I really like about um, crochet and about knitting and kind of doing doing fibery things is um, repetitiveness can be just kind of calming and nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. you can actually be productive while watching TV, you know, mm -hmm. if you're feeling guilty about being a sack and watching TV, then you can exactly. take up fiber arts. And then it's like, no, this is my project time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, until you binge watch like five shows and you're like, okay, <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> totally. Uh, are there any shows that you uh, like to watch while while crocheting? Um, I think I was, the, I mean, I go through phases. Um, I think I like, um, like uh, X Files style, uh -huh. yeah. Um, yeah. Partly because um, I mean, it's just. I mean, of course, they're nice. It's nice to watch them, but also, I mean, uh, sometimes it's scary, and it's nice to like just you know <laughs> not having to look all the time. <laughs> I totally agree. Totally agree with that. Um, yeah, suspense really it gets to me a lot of times, and um, yeah. Yes, I enjoy having a distraction where I'm like, okay, they're just going to walk through the scary house right now and something's going to jump out at them and I don't have to look and have the jump scare when that happens. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, All the good reasons to do crochet or yeah, fiber arts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, but I do enjoy like comedy and that kind of shows as well. Yeah, or, or cooking shows. I mean, they're just relaxing as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about a friend or just talking with a friend yesterday about the um, old Japanese Iron Chef uh, oh. episodes. And yeah, we were we were reminiscing about uh, the different chefs and the different personalities and, and stuff on that show. That was nice. a really, really good one. <laughs> the French chef got um, challenged a whole bunch, Sakai, and 
he was like mm -hmm. the one to eat for for the chefs that were like coming on to sort of like you know make the statement and he already he hardly ever got beat he was just like so good so on top of his chef game <laughs> Nice. I never saw any of the uh, any of the remakes, but I was just like, I don't know, I don't think that they would be the same. But I guess the, there's a new one out now, which is very yeah. kind of like showy. Okay, I have not seen any one of them. No, would you you recommend them? Obviously, I do. They're fun. They're like you know, they're a little bit campy. They're all you know in Japanese and dubbed, and. Right. Um, and, but the like the sh the chefs are amazing, and mm -hmm. uh, the ingredients are always like really interesting. I like the like I like the idea of having a challenge that is ingredient based mm -hmm. because I find that's how I tend to cook a lot. It's like, oh, I got this thing. Now what am I going to make with it? You know? Aww. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's a really that's that makes you creative, I guess, in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, cool. yeah, and there, there were the personalities and then there was like the tasting at the end and the judging, which was always, mm -hmm. which was always kind of funny because they would have, they would always have some celebrity on and then they would have like a few, a few uh, like food people on. And then they had mm -hmm. this woman on and it was really funny for like, she, she kept recurring and for the first season or a couple of seasons, her title was fortune teller and she was very very difficult she was she was just she never liked anybody's food she was critical of everybody Aww. but it was funny because i think by the final season her title was food critic <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering about that i'm like oh, all right <laughs> oh, it's funny but yeah she mm. was she was definitely like the the one who was always going to kind of like throw the the match a little bit under the know. bus yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i'm at my color change to red okay. yeah yes let's let's do that red red sounds mm -hmm. good yeah let's see if i okay so i'm gonna let the other yarn go and I'm going to start crocheting my 12 stitches with red. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, cool. so this is the fifth row. So I've done four rows so far in a single color thread. I think you have as well. Yeah. Or have you that, done? But... Yeah, yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, doesn't yeah. matter the exact number of rows because um, it's just a tube anyway. Um, so now uh, when you change color, I mean, the way I do it, and this is not the best way to do it if you want like an invisible color change, but mm -hmm. I think it's okay for now if we just... Uh, so at the end of the last stitch, um, what you can do is... Uh, start with a regular single crochet with the older yarn with the first yarn and like let it come up to like two loops like this okay so and then take the red yarn or any other colored yarn and uh yeah pull through uh, and then just pull it through yeah and then start continuing from there in the other yarn right. and then you reverse this after yeah can go however long you want and then change back. So it's a little, a little tricky to handle everything yeah. at first because mm -hmm. you have two yarns and stuff, but don't worry about it. Just get it through there and <laughs> and can cinch it all up. Can cinch it all up later. <laughs> Fix it <Yeah>. in post. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think crochet is so forgiving that way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know much about knitting because I'm not that I mean, I'm not I've tried, but I haven't really gotten into it yet. Um, yeah, but I find crochet really forgiving. Like, even if you make a mistake, you can always go back. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, um, I think that so now you can really kind of see the stitches to 
to there. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see that new that new stitch in red. And that's like the, mm -hmm. the entire anatomy of the stitch. And then that's the second stitch there. Um, I, I appreciate both. I mean, there have been many times where I've like made a mistake in knitting and had to rip a bunch out and, and missed crochet. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the thing about knitting is that you're like, when, when we crochet here, like we have completed this previous stitch. The only live stitch that's on the hook is generally the one that you're like working on, right? Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're working like one stitch at a time. With knitting, you have like a ton of live stitches on the hook. And so the yeah. easiest beginner like mistake to do, and, and honestly, it's just the easiest knitting mistake to do, is uh, mm -hmm. accidentally dropping a stitch off of your needle. Yeah. And then because of the way the structure for knitting is, if you drop mm -hmm. one stitch off the needle, that means it can run all the way down through all of the other rows that you've already knitted. Um, and so that can be a pain. It, the, but the cool thing is, it is recoverable um, with a crochet hook. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can take a crochet hook and like pick uh -huh. up all of the stitches again and put that stitch back on your needle if you catch mm -hmm. it in time. Um, but, huh. or the other thing that's kind of cool is if you, realize that you made a simple mistake like 20 rows back or something and let's say you did a purl stitch 20 rows back that should be a knit or you crossed a cable in the wrong direction or something like that you can actually like knit up to that spot again mm -hmm. drop all of your stitches down in that area fix it like 20 rows back and then pick up everything and knit it back up to where you are um so now, sometimes that is more complicated than just ripping it all out <laughs> and going back. But I, the option is cool. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas you can't do that in crochet. If you need to fix a stitch, since every stitch is like fully completed, you have to, you would have to rip yeah. it back out and redo it. Right. Yeah. But ripping out in crochet is not nearly as scary as ripping out in knitting because you don't have all of these live stitches. You can just like rip willy-nilly back to the point that you have to fix and yeah. it's fine you're not going to drop any stitches or mess anything else up so mm -hmm. yeah both, definitely both are um you both have their pros and cons right yeah i just noticed that i was uh, stitching like inside out so I, I oh, my, yeah. 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 See, this, this stuff happens. Like, I, I mean, even though I've been crocheting for a while, like, yeah. <laughs> yep. In the end, there will be a resistor cushion, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're at, I'm at the point now of, mm -hmm. uh, I've done one row. Uh, mm -hmm. of the red. Yeah, now you go back to the now we're going back other the, the base color. Got it. Yes. So am I doing the same thing where I I grab yeah. the red loop, I go into the stitch, grab the red loop and then finish it out exactly. with the yeah with the mm -hmm. um gray. Cool. Yeah. So we do get a little jog there in the um mm -hmm. in the pattern which is fine there there are a lot of different techniques if like the little jog bugs you there are different techniques that you could do exactly. um yeah i know that there's a way to do i don't know it off the top of my head i do know mm -hmm. that there is a way of doing jogless stuff in mm -hmm. a spiral like we're doing mm -hmm. um Another way would be if we weren't doing a spiral, we could be doing um, sort of like individual rows. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can show when I get to the next one. And mm -hmm. so when we like complete one row, we could basically like uh, increase, like increase the distance and then like mm -hmm. knit the second row. So it's kind of like a, you know, if you're, you think about like, 
building a tower out of a, out of a bunch of bricks. You know, you brick all the way around, mm -hmm. and then you go up, and then you brick all the mm -hmm. way around. You could be doing right. it. A lot, a lot of ways to do things. Exactly. Yeah, that's what makes it fun as well, because there's just so many, like, yeah, you can come up with new techniques on your own as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and there's a lot of ways to cheat as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so? it's not, well, I mean, like, so when I started, I was supposed to, like, do 12 stitches. And mm -hmm. at some point, I lo lost count. And I think it was 13. So I skipped the stitch. And that's totally oh. fine. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I, I have yeah. not actually gone back to see if I have 12 stitches. I probably should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, I'm not going to mm. do red again. So I'm actually going to okay. break this yarn just because so yeah. I don't have to keep kind of moving it around. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to give myself a lot of a pretty long tail so that it's easier to weave back in at the end. Mm -hmm. Although this one. Ooh, this one will be easier because yeah. you actually don't have to weave in your ends. You can just stuff them all inside. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <Love> it. <laughs> uh, knitting surgery, as <laughs> Nitika says, is what I was talking about, about dropping stitches and fixing them with a crochet hook. Right. <laughs> Hardcore skill. Um, I think the most complicated knitting surgery I've ever done um, mm -hmm. And like, I'm still not finished this sweater. This is a multi-year project, but it languishes for a few years and then I pick it up and then it languishes for a few years. And, and that's fine, mm -hmm. by the way, it's fine to have projects like that. <laughs> so yeah, if you're if you're coming from the electronic side of thing and things and you're feeling guilty about all of your projects and stuff and, and languishing or whatever, it, it is a universal thing, no matter if it's electronics or fiber <laughs> or whatever, to have way too many projects going and to like have some sitting that's totally mm -hmm. fine but yeah um i think the most complicated thing i did was um so i'm still working on this sweater that's a color work sweater so it's like knitting at any point in time it's knitting with two different colors at once and mixing it up on the same row and mm. i'm not super great at it um and i was trying different some different techniques for handling the both like the two colors of yarn. Mm -hmm. The tricky thing is that you want the tension to be even between those two colors of yarn so that your stitches don't distort, right? So that like mm -hmm. all your stitches look the same because basically you're making a geometric pattern out of um, these two different colors. Yeah. So I had tried a new technique for one row and mm -hmm. it, the tension was like a little bit weird on one of the strands of yarn. And I was like, oh, well, it's a little bit weird, but whatever, it'll be fine. Like the the thing that you'll hear uh, knitters and crocheters say a lot is, oh, that'll block right out. <laughs> and what that means is uh, there's this finishing step for mm. uh, for textiles where you, you know, get your, your final garment wet, you wash, you hand wash it, and then you lay it out to dry. And as you lay it out to dry, you generally like, pin it out or stretch it out into the final shape that you want it to take. And this is particularly useful on shawls, like kind of lacy shawls that have like points and some sort of, you know, geometric shape to it that's more than just like a square. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, so I thought I saw that difference in tension and I was like, oh, that'll block right out. And man, half a sweater later, I was still looking at that and I'm like, that's, that's not going to block out. <laughs> So uh, a very interesting thing about, about knitting and stuff is that um, you, you, can, um, you can separate chunks out and then graft it back together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all it takes is snipping one side of one stitch mm -hmm. and unweaving both of those sides. And I completely split, split the sweater in two and I undid those rows, re-knit them, and then hand grafted it back together. And I have to say, like, you know, now it's been years since I did that, and I can't tell where I did that. 
so I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that sounds ridiculous. complicated, yeah. <laughs> and I think you could you could do that with crochet as well. It would it wouldn't be as easy to undo the stitches though. No. You and mean then, like when you use multiple yeah. colors at the same time? Well, regardless of the multiple colors, mm. I was thinking, can, like, could you just like split something in half that was crocheted and like fix it and then graft it back together? And I think you could, but the grafting would be more complicated. Maybe, mm. maybe. actually, it might not be. It would just, well, no, it would be a little more complicated, I think, because when you're knitting, it's it's pretty simple. You can really easily follow the path of the pattern just with a um just with the needle mm -hmm. and so you can essentially like sew your knitting back together but mm -hmm. you you're creating a knit row as you're sewing crochet i think that would be really hard to do to right. like crochet to create a crochet stitch with a sewing needle yeah no that's that's hard yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've not tried it now I know what my next project would, yeah, what it's <laughs> experiment I would do, yeah. I think that there are ways that you could do it though that um, it wouldn't maybe be like exactly making a crochet stitch, but it would be, you could yeah. make it pretty unnoticeable, I think. Right. All right. So, all right, I think I am back to my starting point again. And mm -hmm. I want to do a different color. How many how many rows was I supposed to? Um I mean <laughs> I usually do like okay, let's see, I'm gonna get this focus. I feel like it's about yeah. the right time. Yeah, one, two, three, four in between. So I usually do oh, just did. one. Wait, Ooh, maybe I should do less. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like think you should try to Yeah. Just because um the yeah, just because it looks cleaner, like or or it looks kind of like a, a resistor. Yeah. <laughs> like almost a resistor. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I was talking too much. <laughs> talking too much, not paying attention. No, I, All right. I think even I didn't do it right, yeah. but then it's going to, the one I'm doing right now is going to look something like this. Yeah, it's going to look smaller. Yeah. And it is satisfying yeah. to be able to yeah. do all of that by just like pulling it all out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. Yeah. I like how it looks. <laughs> so let's see. Till says comparing circuit functions automatically sounds like hell. Different pinouts for similar parts like transistors or LEDs on on driving sinking pins. Um, interesting. On the other hand, op amps. Yeah, without a schematic, like comparing a circuit function with just a layout would be would be pretty difficult without knowing what the what the IC is or what the pinout is and stuff like that. For sure. Okay, so I'm going to put this through and grab it. So um, talk to me, you made a really, really beautiful circuit board um mm -hmm. that is it's a moon phase calendar as well as a period tracker and yes. I, I super appreciate uh you know in this crazy new climate that is in the u.s where you know women can be prosecuted now on the basis mm -hmm. of whether or not they're having a period um mm -hmm. you know keeping being able to track that is still very very important and then you know, having it someplace that's that's uh, personal and not tied to an online service that could be subpoenaed or whatever. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, is is also important. And so, um, yeah, can you tell us? Can you tell us about the board? And if you're, um, 
if you're looking, I'll try to put a link up in the chat um, to Anu's oh, website. Also... Awesome pictures on it. Okay. Okay, so what? Yeah, and um, and the board no, all has this Islamic geometric pattern on it, which is mm -hmm. also really beautiful. And post that in the chat. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I think. Uh, so I think it kind of coincided at the same time when I, I was really interested in like looking at how Islamic geometry patterns can be kind of visualized like with LEDs and so on. And that's also the time when um, the Roe versus Wade legislation happened. And, yeah. and I, I think something clicked out. I, I was also just angry <laughs> just at the yeah. climate of everything. And um, I was thinking, okay, like there's this, there's this geometry and, I, and then I think I've been, I've been following a lot of people who work with like, or who kind of do Islamic geometry art, uh, mm -hmm. mostly, I mean, through like drawing and painting and so on. And some of them, um, or at least one person I know that um, was exploring the geometry and how you can have moon phases al alongside them, right? So mm -hmm. it wasn't exactly what I did, but I was inspired by that kind of work. And I thought, okay, this is going to be really interesting because it, I mean, it, I, yeah. I could do it with the kind of layout that I was thinking about with the grid structure. And, um, and yeah, and there, there was an opportunity here to like, not just like have a decorative, like I could have just made like a, like a NeoPixel, you know, rainbow right. sort of a thing. And that would have been just as pretty. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think uh, just, you know, like the whole, uh, yeah, mm, people losing their rights and so on. I thought this was a chance for me to also use this in a different way um and at the same time kind of make a point that like i mean all of us are now expected to kind of you know even if we track something it has to be super personal it has to be like hidden or um you're not supposed to talk about it with uh, our doctors like you know you know you never know when you'll be outed or right yeah um um so yeah i mean all of this kind of played into the whole like why I made this board and how I did it. But I also have to uh, give credit to Arturo who made the board. So I had the idea, but Arturo <laughs> made the board and he yeah. soldiered the NeoPixels and yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many NeoPixels was that is on that board? Because it's pretty big. It is, it is. Yeah, it took a lot of work. Um, so there's uh, 10 per, per unit and um, but then the units are interconnected, so it should be, I think it's around 250. Wow, nice. Yeah, that's how many, yeah, that's how many, that, that's how, that's the array that I wrote in the program. Yeah, that's how many I counted, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so it was a lot of work, um, <laughs> mostly for Arturo. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, uh, what is the processor and what is it programmed in? So, so the, the processor or the board that we're using is, uh, the, uh, 2040 stamp, which is Arturo's uh, solder party board. Um, nice. and yeah. it's the, it's the round carrier. Yeah. For the board. Yeah. Cool. So it sort of has the similar, it has a similar structure as a uh, circuit playground, like an Adobe circuit playground. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the RP2040 um, processor on it. Mm -hmm. um, is it, I'm curious if it's um, done in Arduino or CircuitPython? Or... I you wrote it in CircuitPython. Yeah. Oh, cool. I just used new editor. I'm really new to CircuitPython and I just find new editor quite easy and convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a lot of help for, for making it. So yeah, I have to share the credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
totally. We all we all definitely get help with projects. Mm -hmm. Are also good, just good excuses to learn new skills too. Yeah, definitely. I learned a lot of. Yeah, I learned how to like yeah code NeoPixels and yeah, it was fun. It was really yeah. fun, like uh, learning, like think, like playing with color and like looking at experimenting with how to like get twilight colors on this board. Uh, that was a nice fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um is it at all is it all at all touch reactive or no okay. no we we tried a few ex things but then i thought it was just like nice to just have it like a calendar like on it you know on a desk or yeah yeah mm -hmm. nice yeah i mean I, I ideally it would be great if it if there was like kind of a, like a keypad controller or something where each button links to like you know each unit on the board and that that's one way to like, you know, kind of make it useful for people who don't can't program or don't know how to program. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah, I'm not there yet. I think I'm still yeah learning. Yeah. <laughs> no, cool. It's always uh, I, I feel like projects always have there's there's always more. <laughs> exactly. Always yeah. more you could do. Yeah. Um, yeah, know. but I've been like experimenting a lot with uh, like geometries and patterns and how hardware can speak to those patterns. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, you had, uh, I saw at the beginning, you had a really interesting um, like textile shirt, I think it was behind you. Yes. With this interesting pattern on it. Yeah. What, yes. what is, what is that? um it's um it's uh how do you i forgot the so it's it's embroidered in a sashiko style and uh the yeah the stitch the stitch pattern is called hitomesashi i'm not saying it correctly i'm yeah but yeah it's 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 a sashiko uh stitch style yeah Nice. And it's it's um, it's basically <laughs> it tells a story in binary code, and there's a yeah so there's a story that I wrote a little like I think uh, I can't remember now was it a 98 character story or an 88 character story, <laughs> and each alphabet corresponded to like a binary so it was either like a if it's a consonant if it's a one and if it's a vowel it's a zero, oh. so. Yeah, so the story is actually a love story between one and zero. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I think it says something like, um, let's see if I can find exactly uh, this. I'll read it out. Um, I think I don't have to search for it too long. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it says, I want, so yeah, it says on a dot, dotted canvas, one tiptoed to zero and said, I want to make patterns with you. Zero gasped and cried out, you complete me. Oh, so, nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's the story on the t-shirt. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> that's very cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I, I did this because I went to a, a textile printing class oh. over a weekend, and I screen printed the pad, like the, the black grid behind mm -hmm. it, and uh, and then I embroidered on that black grid. Yeah. Nice, all hand embroidered. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. How long did that take? Yeah. Um, not too long actually. It went quite quickly. Um, I think maybe a, maybe a week or two. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, is that then hand washable or are there any 
uh, specific well, locking instructions? Because like, it, will it will it pucker? I guess if you if you wash it. Yes, it might, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I I reinforced it quite a bit on the back. Um, I don't know how that will, yeah, how long that will last, but I reinforced it with textile glue and some um, interfacing, iron-on interfacing. So nice. I, I'm not sure if I should put it in the machine, but probably a, it would withstand a hat hand wash. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, thank you. Do you embroider? Um, I don't embroider. Mm -hmm. I did get a little sashiko kit at a uh, yarn show recently, um, mm -hmm. and so, but I haven't, I haven't gotten into it yet. But that's mm -hmm. that will probably be my first foray. foray. Um, mm -hmm. I, the only thing that I've done, like, uh, like kind of needle arts wise is I mm -hmm. did some cross stitch when I was younger. Okay. Um, and I actually, so speaking of cross stitch and resistors, mm -hmm. I do have the Adafruit kit mm -hmm. that is the Ohm, Ohm Sweet Ohm where you can cross stitch the resistor color code. Um, mm -hmm. I've had that for a while and I just have not. <laughs> I've not opened it. One of these days. One of these days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a bunch of kids lying around as well. One day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so many projects. So mm -hmm. many projects. <laughs> um, so for the yellow stripe that I just did, I I'm trying to like, you know, just use up uh scrap yarn that I have. Yeah. And so yeah. all I had for yellow was a very, very thin yarn and I just um doubled it up. So I just used oh, that's nice. once and at once and yeah. yeah. Did the that works. Yellow. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just going standard rainbow here so that I don't have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah. Oh. Your, your circuit board is getting a lot of love in the in the chat. <laughs> love the geometry and the Thank LEDs. You. And then Dan says hello, hello Dan. <laughs> All right, I am getting my green started. Mm -hmm. Just hold that through. And a lot of times, and this is this is like true with knitting as well, when you're like joining colors, sometimes you just need to like let your first stitch be a little loose and weird and then yeah. go forward a few stitches and then you can sometimes it's easier to like come back to it and then mm -hmm. kind of like cinch it up a little bit with the yeah fair yarn. Cool. I definitely have a lot of different <laughs> yarn weights and thicknesses going on here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't have uh, actually, Yeah, no, I'm just going to use this uh, kind of gray brown yarn to like, because um, I don't have the right color for the um, uh, tolerance. Uh, mm. Gray, I can't tell which one it is. Yeah. Right, for the tolerance stripe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. Am I doing like kind of too many here? I need to go to my resistor color code chart. Yeah. I'm, well, no, I got the multiplier now. So I guess mm -hmm. technically, what am I making here? Um, so my first digit is red, so that's a two. Second mm -hmm. digit is uh, orange, so it's a three. Third digit is yellow, so it is a four, so two, three, four. And then green is my multiplier, which is 100K. <laughs> so I'm apparently crocheting a 230, 234K resistor. And then the next one will be the tolerance. And then 
uh, there can even be one more that is a temperature coefficient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so the... I guess my tolerance, if I go in rainbow, my blue tolerance will be 0.25%. <laughs> okay. Let's see the end. All right, like, let's see. So I'm going to cut this one off. I'm just kind of like shoving in my ends as I go just to keep them out. I realized the one thing I did forget yeah. to bring with me today is the filling. <laughs> like, ah, okay. Oh, I knew I forgot something. That's okay. I can, I can fill it and fill it and seal it later. Yeah. Probably shouldn't have uh, tucked that in though until I um, until I cinched up that stitch. So I think I'll do that. I'm just like doing kind of three stitches to just to start, and then I can kind of go back mm -hmm. and pull on this green one and just get it to cinch up a little bit more, so it's not quite as as loose there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like, so crochet is very fast. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is typically a lot faster than knitting because with each stitch, with each stitch you use more yarn and you generally create bigger stitches than you do with um, a lot of knitting. Yeah. Um, so it just works up very quickly, but it also uses more yarn. So right. yeah. If you have a limited amount of yarn, if you have a yarn that you're trying to kind of like stretch and make as much use as possible, then um, knitting is a little bit, bit better suited to that. But for quick things, crochet is great. And crochet mm -hmm. also uh, is great for things that need a little bit of structure to them. Yeah. So that's why for things like this and for things like um, like plushies, it it tends to be a little bit, I would say, more more favored over knitting because you can actually make like a little bit of a structure structure to it. Yeah. Yeah, Have I started learning crochet with amigurumi yeah. plush toy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Such cute amigurumi stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, you were asking me something. Um, yeah, I was curious. Um, I've seen, I occasionally see people doing very interesting things where they're crocheting like complex mathematical surfaces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was wondering if you had ever um, done any of that or seen any um, of that used in teaching when, when you were in, in academia using um like using crochet to teach sorry was that no it's basically um i have seen and i am not i i can't mm -hmm. recall like specifics at this point in time but um because it was like the last time i saw something like this was a few years ago but um mm -hmm. basically uh i've seen people crochet like complex surfaces Mm -hmm. in order so that people can actually as just a visualization aid basically for for right. different for different equations right like you yeah you have complex geometry that's described by a particular equation and it's actually yeah. possible to crochet those shapes mm -hmm. and to do it relatively accurately because of the way that you like can increase stitches or or um or do that yeah. and so yeah i i always thought i was like dang if uh in multivariable calculus, if I had had some crocheted shapes to help me visualize some of that stuff, I probably would have had an easy yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I only like read about them and I yeah. you know, just, I, I know just, just through, you know, online, like some mm -hmm. articles that, you know, there's people who, you know, engage with imagining physics and like, you know, particular structures using crochet and, also, yeah, people who like in, like visualize parabolic planes and whatnot. 
yeah. in crochet. Yeah. It, it's it's super interesting, but I've never tried anything of that sort yet. Mm -hmm. It's 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 it's. I mean, I think there are books as well that teach you these things. Um, um, I know a friend who owns one of these books, and Ooh, uh, interesting. I'll have to look. Look, look that up. Yeah, and um, yeah, and I think there's. I think. Yeah, I think I need to like, you know, commit to learning the, yeah, <laughs> learning the complexity of that. Yeah. I think the most complex one, complex kind of crochet thing I've done so far is um, my lenticular towels. So, I mean, it's not really math, but it's, it had, I had to do a bit of like experimentation in terms of getting the right, uh, like the, the right height that could uh, mask um the base so that whenever you tilted the the the, the towel that i made um it would uh, show a different kind of image so yeah that's that's oh. the most i've done yes i saw that um uh so is that the same as I, well i guess okay it's crochet um in knitting i have heard that uh, the term mm -hmm. generally used for that is shadow knitting shadow knitting yeah exactly yeah yeah um, I don't know if that is called shadow crochet as well. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like it would probably be, but yeah, yeah. Th that is really, really fun. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, like, it's yeah. a little bit like encoding a secret message into, into your yeah. thing, but something that like anybody could read. So I think exactly. the, um, the, the first uh, knit one that I saw that I really liked was, um, and uh, yeah, Harry, Harry, prob problematic Harry Potter. Um, but it was a dark mark scarf, where the uh -huh. yeah, where you, yeah, you looked at it in a yeah. certain way, and like the dark mark appeared. And I thought that that was kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I made one which, uh, like, uh, yeah, you you tilt it, and there's a QR code that you can read. Yeah, yeah, that is super cool. Um, so yeah, the way that that's done for people who haven't seen this is you you make ridges in the pattern. Mm -hmm. And so you have some areas that are like a little bit flat and some areas that have this ridge. And then when you tilt it and you look at, you look at it in a certain way, uh, the way that like all the ridges and flat spots line up, it pops out another design. Yeah, so. I can show what I, I can show yeah. I have it right here. So I think it looks something, uh, okay so it's kind of like this so yeah. this is a prototype in a paper so when you look at it like uh, at, at this angle you don't see anything but if i tilt it it's like a qr code so this was my nice. initial paper prototype um oh cool and then you make that I, paper prototype is it just printed and folded yeah yeah that's it nice. and then i crocheted this gigantic towel um, <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> I can't really yeah. see the whole thing here, but yeah, it's uh, okay. That's not, I can't really, yeah, show it. it uh, it's hard to do on camera, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I have a smaller prototype. I initially tested it with the data matrix, and it, it oh, also cool. works. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was like the longest project. Actually, it's not true. I made a blank a blanket recently. That was my longest project. But yeah, this right. one took thirty days, and it wasn't fun because I didn't know if it would work, <laughs> if the QR code would get detected or not. I didn't know if I was, you know, missing some stitches. So I had to be really, really careful. <laughs> yeah, that's one that would be, uh, yeah, important to get right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. exactly. that, that was harder to cheat on <laughs> exactly so yeah when it did actually detect i was so happy it was the achievement of my life <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah nice yes i i can imagine the sense of accomplishment would have been excellent <laughs> yeah cool what what other cool things do you have lying around? Now I'm curious. <laughs> um, I have, you have a couple any other of projects that you can show us. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, let's see what's in this box. Of uh, I have a little box. Um, so I made 
Okay, it's not connected now, but this, uh, let's see. Um, yeah. So do you know the little, the, the rhyme who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? Yeah. She should show it this way, right? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Um, so this is a game, this is a game prototype where you can play who stole the cookie with, with the computer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like all done in variables, so you can press a button. So I stitched everything, and I think the stitching these um, these uh, letters in a typewriter script is also is something I'm really proud of. Nice. It looks really yeah. nice. It says so. Yeah. So there's a little screen that's like um, yeah, it tells you like uh, which. Uh, so you go like who stole the cookie, uh, um, and then you guess a number by pressing mm -hmm. this button. Uh, and then if you and then it asks you are you sure you you want to accuse number seven and you're like yes it's you so you press this and then <laughs> and then it, if you get it wrong it says no then number five stole the cookie and then you keep going until you know you get it right yeah nice yeah so that's a fun little cookie game that i made um and then i have these uh, fun little I think I spoke about, I mean, I spoke about both the Internet of Towels project and this one in mm -hmm. um, in the Open Hardware Summit talk. But this is my uh, crochet, crypto crochet key. So these are all crocheted keys and they're all crocheted in like a, a yarn that's just multicolored. So every time you crochet this key, it ends up being a different, a completely unique key. So it's kind of like a unique ID. Huh. And yeah. I programmed like a machine learning model to like, you know, recognize each key individually and created a smart home security system. Like, yeah. So you could, yeah, enter your house by like showing this key to the camera and then it recognizes that it. And... Super cool. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, that is really fascinating. Um, I mean, it's not like... foolproof. <laughs> But yeah, yeah I, I think that that is, um, you know, I, I used to hand dye yarn a little bit and, you know, when you hand dye stuff like you no know, two skeins are, are going to be yeah. alike, um, yeah. even, you know, even relatively solid ones, um, mm -hmm. but a lot of dyers, you know, do all sorts of different patterns mm -hmm. and speckles and stuff like that. And I think that that's a really cool application for um, like, yarn that is already hand-dyed and, and unique, yes. and then using it to give you unique access to something. That was really yes. cool. Thank you. Yeah, it was really fun to make because, I mean, all you were making was like amigurumi plush toys, but then yeah. <laughs> you could be like, oh, I'm, I'm doing machine learning with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I'm giving myself here a little bit of extra space between my last color and the tolerance. And this, my resistor is going to be very long and skinny. It's going to be kind of weird, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. You can fit all your components, the ones on, on your go. dish, all of them. Yeah. Right. My <laughs> On my 0.25%, 234K kilo ohm yeah. resistor. <laughs> exactly. That, that, that's such a good number. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it actually, yeah, it helps. I mean, the resistor color code was created to be easy to remember, right? So it kind mm -hmm. of makes sense that it goes through the rainbow and, and should, you know, ha and then sequentially through numbers and stuff. But I never, yeah. my problem is that I never remember where it's the starting point of the rainbow. And yeah. so I always have to like, because they start it with, uh, what is Violet. it? Yeah, with black, okay. which is, so weird to me yeah. yeah and then it goes to brown and so mm -hmm. yes i have a hard time remembering that it is black first and then brown and then it goes to rainbow yeah and yeah then the then the gray and white at the very end too so yeah yeah mm -hmm. did you have a when you were i mean what i don't remember what your background was but when i was studying electronics they gave us a little like a mnemonic device to remember oh, interesting yeah 
I'm trying to think, remember what it was. What, what was it? I did, I did not get a mnemonic, uh, mnemonic device. Um, or no, but it I, wasn't a mnemonic device. It was more, more, it was actually just a, yeah, you had to go through all the letters, but you had to, yeah. It was a funny little phrase. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, oh, it no, was. I, I was not taught that. <laughs> Sadly. Uh, but I also didn't like electronics in school, so. Um, no? Okay. No. What got uh, you into electronics then? Uh, my first job, they needed somebody to do electronics. Funding kind of got scrambled when I was hired. And, um, mm -hmm. and so uh, I just started kind of learning from people there and, and doing it. I had a, I graduated with a general engineering degree, but was more geared towards, um, I had taken more classes that were geared towards mechanics and um, a mm -hmm. little bit of manufacturing as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, the intro to electronics class was not hands-on at all mm -hmm. and so that just really did not work with the way that I learn and yeah. um, and so I just I really just didn't like it and didn't see how it could be fun and exciting and yeah um and it wasn't until that job when I had like a you know concrete thing that we were like trying to make this tiny six inch airplane fly and mm -hmm. at that point in time it was like 1999 so it was actually a very mm. difficult task right <laughs> uh, yeah it wasn't until like there was this actual project where we were trying to do this really cool thing that um i was like oh this is this is actually fun look this is <laughs> this is making something fly yeah that's cool yeah yeah, I, I also just, I, I remember not enjoying my electronics degree at all, my bachelor's <laughs> degree. And then when I started working with design, I tried to make my own little like self-balancing like uh, robot. Um, ah, and yeah. I was terribly unsuccessful, <laughs> but but it, I was still like able to like, I learned a lot of things. Like I used an H bridge, I used like, you know, motors and yeah, it was it was a lot, nice. lot of fun trying to make it work. I just couldn't figure out the accelerators, like, sorry, the accelerometer. Yeah. Mm, like the IMU yeah. part was just really hard for me to figure out. Yeah. Yep. I wonder if things have gotten easier now. Yeah. I think IMUs especially have gotten easier. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know what uh, what device you were working with, but like, I mean, when I first entered electronics, uh, mm -hmm. it was most sensors were still analog, so right. it was a lot of like op amps and signal conditioning and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. temperature compensating and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. and now that most everything is digital and like a lot of those um, IMUs will just, uh, they'll pretty much just do all of the transformations in the map for you and spit mm -hmm. out rates or, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, accelerations, whatever it is that you're measuring, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really nice. Yeah, I, I, I was so, <laughs> sorry? I was like, kids these days, I got it so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I have now crocheted a, I don't know, dark gray slash maybe black mm -hmm. tolerance strip. I'm also not being very good about making my, um, making my round, my rounds like meet at the same place, <laughs> but that's okay, I almost got Me it. Me neither, so, that's okay. Yeah, I'm uh, almost, I'm, my, my resistor is really tiny. It's, it's mm. really cute. And uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> it is super cute. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I I made a very small hole. I, I just realized I should have stopped it even earlier, but it's okay. I'm gonna, just going to push the... Ah, uh, yeah. 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 So apparently um, the one... The one color that there is no black for is the tolerance strip, which I have crocheted a black stripe for. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll pretend that that is either brown or silver. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, brown would be 1%. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sure. It's yeah. Sort of, well, actually, it's, yeah, it's not super purple. It has like a little bit of purpley overtones on it, but mm -hmm. so it could, if it was purple, it would be 0.1%. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's cool. So I could probably do like maybe three more rounds and then decrease. Yes. I mean, if you want to match your, like the beginning. Yeah, my, my yeah. other end kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes, this is, this is a very long, skinny resistor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, but I really like the colors. I think they're super friendly. Yeah. Thanks. You know, you can't go wrong with rainbow. It's it's a little bit of a lazy no. choice, but it's, it always works. So <laughs> it always works. I agree. I'm gonna try to stick these guys in there out of the way. Might not do the decreasing quite. I might not finish it out because I think I do want to actually stuff it with a little bit of uh, miscellaneous mm. fiber. Right. Although it does like it, you know, it stays pretty, pretty well on its own, but I just want to give it just like a little bit more yeah. sturdiness. True. I mean, I, I mean, I also usually like, I mean, if I don't have something to stuff it with, I just go for like scrap yarn or sure. yep. like paper, <laughs> crushed paper. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, that's um, true. Wow. Sorry. Oh, um, I was just thinking that like, uh, like that fiber fill stuff or the, or just like, um, like cotton balls or something like that would be good. Cause then mm -hmm. it might provide like a little bit more of something to stick resistor ends yeah, into. Yeah, exactly. Like a little bit more cushiony. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm stitching my final yarn ends nice yeah i definitely want this one to have a little more structure since it's so skinny <laughs> yours, <laughs> yours, yours i think holds up better on its own with that that kind of form yeah factor. otherwise it might just become a bag like a long bag <laughs> This is cool. I haven't crocheted anything in a long time. And I forget how fast and satisfying mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Exactly. Also, it's so nice, easy when you like can hide your yarn. Like you just have to like pull it through yep. the center. No and yeah, it's to done. End. Best part. Exactly. <laughs> What kind yeah. of, um, what's your favorite or your go-to craft? Is it like knitting or? Ooh, yeah. that's a good question. Yeah, I would say it, it tends to be knitting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I also will spin yarn. So sometimes okay. it's spinning, um, mm -hmm. but most of the time to just kind of like chill out, um, it's knitting, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about electronics, like soldering? Um, so I feel like electronics is my angst uh, <laughs> art. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like, yeah, when the whole like Roe Ro v. Wade thing yeah. uh, came out, like I designed a circuit board, although I haven't actually made it yet. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, it's like a uterus flipping you off with some LEDs mm -hmm. in it. And like that, like I kind of use it to channel like angsty energy, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Like electronics isn't necessarily relaxing for me, but it is something yeah. that I definitely enjoy doing. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, it's not something where I can zone out. Like that's like that's something where I like being where I like having a lot of focus. And yeah. like, creative energy and focus. To it mm -hmm. i guess um yeah. 
which basically means that, and I mean, some people are like that about knitting and about fibers and fiber arts and stuff. And, mm -hmm. but for me, I'm finding what works best for me is to have knitting that's like not that, that I can, that doesn't take that brain power. So it's like the, it's the relaxing zoning out thing at the end of the day, after I've already yeah. done a lot of like creative energies yeah. sort of thinking with like focus thingies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not knitting anything that's super complicated. Although right. I'm itching to do something, um, I'm itching to do more cables. So I think I need to like, I don't know, make a cable sweater or something. Ah, yeah, cables are so pretty. Yeah. I've never done one either. It's it's like my next like kind of challenge to, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do it. I, I, I recently bought myself a stitch dictionary, a crochet stitch dictionary. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah. yeah 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 it's cool so to they do have... them and sort of get inspiration and see all the textures and colors yeah exactly so satisfying <laughs> yes mm -hmm. yeah cables are, are really fun i like just i like the ones i like ones that are like really twisty and crazy and like mm. travel around and stuff like that yeah yeah i i really want to try like a bunch of like interesting um yeah like uh, geometrical patterns like cable kind of yeah with the crochet yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's yeah. so many people who are so creative like yeah online this is this like no like shortage of inspiration <laughs> yeah that that is for sure yeah. um so how are we doing the um the decrease row so the decrease is exactly the same as your increase rows so you um now you have about 12 single crochet and now you yeah. need to yeah put your crochet hook in two single crochets and then uh, I mean, that's how I do it. I think you have different okay. ways of doing decreases. Like some people just do, uh, instead of both the loops, they only use one loop. So they use the outer loop. And oh, then, they, yeah. yeah. So you just go through two outer loops and then pull all the three loops back. Sorry. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Hmm, okay. So you go back from 12 to six. That's, that's the yeah. idea. I'm just, I'm like, I'm interested in different, uh, different te techniques of doing this that I'm like, maybe not as used to. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So if I, I think I'm getting this right. Um, so like you could just like skip every other one. That would yes. be one way of decreasing. Um, yeah, but you don't want to do that though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so you do, you gather one loop like you would on a stitch and then another loop on the second stitch and then pull through all three? Yes, exactly. Okay. That's how I do it. Yeah. Cool. Let me let me show that again while I'm paying more attention to the hammer here. So so through like we normally would, but instead of pulling the loop through and finishing off the stitch, we do the same thing in the next stitch and then pull through all three exactly cool yeah that makes a nice um kind of like gapless mm -hmm. crease we'll see if i ended up with the right amount of stitches <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i had one too many but that's fine <laughs> I st just slip stitch through one of them. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to also perhaps end up with one too many. Or actually, maybe not. Um, uh, oh, no, that's, yeah, there we go. I am back. To Back wow. to my starting point. This was my first, right there was my first um, yeah. increase. Cool. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, cool. And then um, do we do one more of just like no. six single crochets around then? No? no. Okay, just like. You just have to, yeah. Just wrap it Pull off. Your, wrap it off, exactly. But you probably cool. want to try and uh, wrap it in a way that the end, the end, yeah, the hole is like neatly close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I think I'm going to um, stuff it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait on that. But I think I'm going to um, might tidy up my starting end a little mm -hmm. bit just mm -hmm. to kind of show that. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle here. I should have left myself a little bit more of an end. But that's OK. So um, so yeah, I'm I'm doing like a little bit of cheating on the <laughs> on the cinching here since um, since I just didn't I just didn't uh, I think I um, made that initial loop. I think I crossed it the wrong way, so that the wrong one was cinching, <laughs> if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And so now I'm just like faking it by mm -hmm. just this through that first row. Tuck that little red in, in there a little more. You just kind of like can make your own drawstring and then just cinch it. There you go. Good enough. Cool. And then yeah, I could, I'm just gonna probably do a little bit more just to sort of um, capture it well. So that the end doesn't look mm -hmm. out. Sometimes I actually purposefully like split the yarn at this point because it just helps um, helps weave the end in. And so now mm -hmm. what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to like weave, weave the mm -hmm. end there if I can. Mm -hmm. Maybe, oh, maybe not. I now pull that end back out. Maybe. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to. <laughs> if I had left it longer, I could have just like pulled it, cinched it tight through the other end, but mm -hmm. it might be a little, a little challenging. I don't want to do that. Um, maybe what I'll do is I will look all the way up here and then it should put, pull mm -hmm. out. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Ah, it still left it a little bit in. That's okay. I can put that one back through. <laughs> Get back in there. <laughs> Get back in there. Don't poke through end. <laughs> oh, aha, I know. Yeah, you just need to cut it off. Yeah. Yep, just gonna cut it off. Snip it. There we go. Ha ha! Yay! Yay! Cool. It's a, it's a two point <laughs> what cushion? Sorry, two hundred. <laughs> it is a two hundred and thirty four kilo ohm point two. Wait, <laughs> hang on. There were two things. There was like, uh, hang. On. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, right. Temperature coefficient. Okay. Mm. So yes, the blue is the 0.25%. Temperature coefficient is this one. And mm. it does not have, it's supposed to only be brown, red, orange, <laughs> or yellow. Um, okay. So we're going to pretend that that's brown and it's 100%. Brown. Milk. There we go. Okay. Yep. It's, yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Woohoo. <it's cool. laughs> Yeah. Cool. It's gonna look it's gonna look nice on your desk with all the confidence stuff in. <laughs> it is. I can already put some resistors in there. Yeah. Huzzah. Huzzah. Yeah, this will definitely be good with like a little bit of cotton cotton in mm. there to keep its, keep yeah. its shape. Mm -hmm. Sweet. 
And then you just attached a little bit of yarn to the to Yeah, the these are my Exactly. Right. These are my older prototypes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so Ooh. you could hang them and yeah. Have a little hangy prototype. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, now I have a bunch of resistor cushions and that's kind of nice. <laughs> Whole family, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, is there anything else that uh, you're doing that you want people to know about? Or, um, yeah. Uh, or one second. I think I may have to world. switch. Yeah, okay. Oh, good um, timing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bad trip right now. Um, uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I like doing a bunch of these like uh, smaller projects. Um, so I don't really have any thing huge to talk about but um yeah i mean i i'm looking forward to the uh open hardware summit 2022 i'm hoping to be there so if nice. anyone wants to yeah <laughs> catch up so yeah I'm, I'm, i hope i'll be there yeah if everything's cool. all right in the world <laughs> <laughs> or have you submitted a talk I haven't submitted a talk, but I've submitted for a workshop with the with the with the friend and call yeah with the community person, uh, Christine nice. Lundgren. Yeah. Awesome, and I think yeah. that the call for um, proposals is still on. I want to say through January sixth that they extended mm -hmm. the deadline. So for anybody yeah. else watching who's thinking of giving a talk or anything, I encourage you to apply. Exactly. Yeah. Let's do cool. some more talks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was really, this was fun. I like, I like the <laughs> satisfaction of like completing a project too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. In two hours. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know it's like, it's a little long for a live stream, but it's like a good project time. <laughs> I think Harder so as well. To do a full project in like an hour. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Well, thank you everybody who also was in the, in the comments and watched and everything. Super appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're going to take a, a few weeks break for the holidays, but we have some really cool guests lined up for next year that I am excited about. Um, yeah, Jorvan uh, Moss Ajay is going to join us next year and we're going to talk robots. That's going to be fun. And uh, also we're going to um, have some folks from Arduino join us and we're gonna solder up their new Uno kit. So that's all coming up in January. <laughs> all right, well, thank you again, Anu. And I hope thank everybody you, has a festive holiday season and hope you can relax and have some fun. Cool. Happy holidays, see you. Happy holidays.